Hello friends, welcome to this course. In this course, you are going to learn how to use JavaScript to create shopping cart. So we will be using vanilla JavaScript to create a shopping cart. It means that we are going to use pure JavaScript to create the shopping cart. So are there any course requirements or prerequisite? So to do this project, you must have the following skill set. You should have a basic knowledge of HTML and you should have a basic knowledge of CSS. Basic means you just need to understand how CSS and HTML work. You should not be very uh, advanced in both this topic. OK, so need very basic knowledge. What are the course objectives? Participant will be able to implement JavaScript concept in current and future project. So you will be able to learn JavaScript and you can apply this concept in your future and current and future projects. So what will you learn in this course? You will be creating a shopping cart using JavaScript means you will be able to create a shopping cart using vanilla JavaScript. Okay. So who are the targeted students? Students with no JavaScript experience. Front end developers. Anyone who wants to learn JavaScript. So by the end of this course, you will have the following skill sets. Hands on regarding practical and real life scenarios of creating a shopping cart using JavaScript. So what are we going to create? We are going to create the shopping cart. So I'll show you some features. So if I click add to cart, this product has been added to the cart. And here you can see the total amount is $6. If I increment this quantity, so here the quantity is 2 and here the total amount is 12. If I increment to 3, the total amount will be 18. If I decrease, uh, if I press on this minus button, so this item has been decreased to 2 and this quantity is 2 now and the total amount is 12. And if I press this minus again, then the quantity is uh, 1 and the total amount is 6. And if I press it again, it will be removed from the card. Let's add this product. Let's add this product. Okay. And here you can remove the product as well. Okay. From here also you can remove the product. So let's add three products. And if I increase the quantity, so here you can see the amount is 40. And here when the quantity is 1, you can see it is being red okay the color of the button goes to red and here you can clear the cart as well so once you clear the cart all the items will be removed and it will be combined so let me add few products and this all these products are being uh, added to local storage so if i refresh the space this product won't go okay so if i increase the quantity and if i refresh the quantity will be still be five okay and there's one more feature if i click on pay button so it will be a overlay and it will be redirect to redirected to paypal account and here the total amount is 42.50 dollars you can log in and pay otherwise i either you can go to pay with credit card or debit card so once you click on this button it will redirect to the payment page okay so here you can see the total items cola four dollars tea five dollars soft drink five quantity thirty dollars milk two point five dollars mineral water one dollars so total item is forty two point fifty dollars so here you can see the entire cart okay before the payment and here you can uh, here the user can add the billing details and he or she can make the payment okay so if i go back so this was a brief introduction of this course and you will get uh, uh, you will be getting this index dot. Uh, let me see. Let me check index HTML file. Uh, this is a ready file. You don't have to write any code. So I have prepared this HTML file, and you will be getting this main dot CSS file. This will also be a ready file, so you don't have to write any CSS. This main dot JS file will be empty. Okay. All this code we are going to write. Uh, you can just follow along with me, and you can write entire code. And I hope. Uh, you will learn a lot from this course and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye bye. So in this video, I'll show you where to get the HTML files because I have already created the HTML CSS. Okay, so you don't have to create the HTML. 
because uh, if we create HTML files, okay, if we create the UI for this, then it will take more time. So in this series, my focus is on JavaScript and not on HTML and CSS. Okay, so I'll show you where to get the files. So let's go to my website, which is nstinfotech.com. And here we need to click on tutorials and here there is vanilla JS card. So you just need to click on this and this is the link where you will get the files. So vanilla JS card files, we need to click on this. Once you click on this, it will start download and you need to just open this zip file. So once you open this zip file, you will get HTML, CSS, and this is the JS, but this JS is empty. So I'll show you what is in the file. So let me open this in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this is the HTML. Okay, let me open the project folder. Okay, so let's click on this and let me open this files. So this is the HTML file. Okay, I have already created all the HTML. So you don't need to create. Okay, and this is the CSS. This is also been created. So we don't need to create the CSS. And this is the main.js file. So here we will write all the JavaScript code. So this is important. Okay, that's why I have kept it blank. So this is the HTML file which I have created. And if you open this in the browser, Okay, so this will this is the UI for your shopping cart. So if you click on this uh, add to cart, uh, this product will be added to this cart. Okay, so then we will have the option of deleting this item as well. So uh, there are a lot of things uh, we can increase the increment the product from one to three four. Okay, how much product you need? Once you add to cart this product, then you can increment or decrement the product and according to that the price will also increase and decrease so uh, this is uh, the project which we are going to create in our series so you just need to download the files and uh, you should get ready and in the next lecture we will start writing the code so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back so let's start writing javascript code but before that i will enable the strict mode so we need to take string. So in double quotes, I will write use strict. And let me save this file. So this will enable strict mode. So let me explain you with an example. So if I go to the browser and if I open the console, so right click inspect. And here we need to go to console. So you will see with the strict mode enabled here, there will be more errors, which means you are able to write more bug free code because more errors means that the browser will catch those errors and you will be able to fix it. So without strict mode, the console in the browser won't throw some errors. So you will think that everything is okay, but it won't. So one of the example is declaring a variable. So here, if you use let keyword from ES6 syntax and we will declare some variable. So let's declare some variable and we need to assign a value so I'll, i will assign a value as one now i will console log this variable so console log and we need to write the name of the variable and if i save this and now if i go to the browser and let me refresh so here it will log one but when i remove this let keyword and if i save this and if i refresh this page so here you can see we get an error that number is not defined. So this variable is not defined. Okay. So here in this line, I am assigning a value to a variable, but I did not declare this variable because in JavaScript, you need to explicitly declare the variable first. So you have to use some keyword like let or const or you can use var. Without that, if you try to assign some value, to the variable which wasn't declared you will see an error you will see this error only with this strict mode so let me delete this strict mode if i delete this and if i delete this as well and now if i save this and if i go to the browser and if i refresh 
you won't see the error but you will see it logged the value 1 so this is an error in javascript you cannot assign some value to undeclared variable so to catch this kind of error we will use strict mode okay so let me undo this so with the strict mode enabled we will start writing the main code let me save this i want to catch all the events like clicking all this add to cart buttons so how to do that we need to access to the document so let me remove this and here i'll write document which means accessing the dom the document object model and i can use query selector so here i need to write query selector all and i can look for specific element in our case it will be all buttons with add action attribute and the attribute with value add to cart I prepare this custom data attribute because I want to separate the JavaScript in HTML code from the HTML as we can use add to cart. Okay, we can use this class name in all those button and I can let me save this and I can access this class here like this add to cart. So here I can access this class this way, but then this code won't be so obvious because usually the class name is used to style the elements in HTML file by CSS code. But in case we use the data attribute, it means that it connects with JavaScript somehow. And in our case, we will look for element with the kind of attribute. So let me remove this. Let me save this and let me go to main.js. So here we need to write, we need to use square brackets. And inside this square brackets, I can just paste this code so let me copy this and here i will paste the code okay let me save this file and let's assign this to some cons so here we need to write cons and let the name of this cons be add to cart button and because these buttons are in the dome it's not just variable with some value but the value is some element or the node of elements from the dome so i have added this dome name to our variable and here we need to write equal to so now let's save this file and let's console log this add to cart button dome okay so console log add to cart button dome okay let's save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this page so here we are getting the node list okay but it is empty okay so here we forgot to write double quotes let me save this and let me refresh it again so here we can see a node list with every single button okay so here you can see all the buttons are here so let's go to visual studio code so now we can use for each method so let's remove console log and let's remove this round brackets and here we need to write for each and inside this i will take an arrow function and we need to take an argument which could be a custom name in our case let's name it as add to cart button not buttons because now it will be a single button in every single iteration from this loop and of course we need to add dome now let's console add to cart button dome so console log add to cart button dome let's save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this now as you can see in console i have an html code as it comes from the dome now we have access to every single button in our product list so now we can access the parent node so let's use parent node method on our button element so here i will write parent node let's save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this page so here, as you can see in the console that we have access to every single product. Okay, so we have access to every single product because it comes from here. So here we can access every single add to cart button and then we can go one level up in the dome and the parent of this add to cart button is the product element. And why we are doing this? Because now we can assign this product assign this element okay let me remove this so we can assign this element 
this parent element of the button to a const and then we can console log product dot query selector now we can use query selector method because we are looking for only one element now we want to access only the product image product name and product price so we are looking for the element with the class name like product image so here we need to write product image let me copy this and here we need to access product name and here we will access product price let me save this file now let's go to the browser and let me refresh this page okay we are getting some issue okay we need to add dot so i forgot to add because this is a class let's save this and let's go to the browser and refresh so now we have access to every single element okay so this is the image this is the name and this is the price let's go to visual studio code now in this for each loop let's create let's refer to add to cart button dom and let's create add event listener and add event listener will take two arguments the first one is what kind of event we are looking for so we are looking for click event and the second one will be a callback which will be executed when the event occurs so in our case it will be an ea6 arrow function this will be a callback and here we need to put comma and now let's move this code here okay inside this arrow function if i save this and now if i go to the browser so now if i click on any of this add to cart button we can see product image product name and product price so let's click on this button so here you can see product image product name and product price and if i click on milk so here we can access the image product name and the product price same goes with the cola so here we can access image product name and product price so let's go back to visual studio code and let's change the name from product to product dom because we are referring to Tom element and now let's create another cons with the name product sorry here also we need to copy this and we need to paste it here okay because we have changed the name from product to product dom and now we will create another const which is equal to an object and inside we will create keys okay so first one will be image and we will assign this value okay to this key so let's copy this and let's paste it here and then the second one is name so let's copy this value and let's paste it here and the third one is price so let's copy this and paste it here and let's remove everything from here and let's write console log and we can console log product okay let's save this so now we have access to product object every time when we click add to cart button so let's go to the browser and let me refresh this so if i click on add to cart button so we have access to image name and price okay so let's click on add to cart button cannot access product dom before initializing okay so let me cut this and paste it here let's save this and let's go back to the browser and let's click on add to cart so here we need to cut this and here we need to paste it okay we need this before this product okay so let's save this and now if i go to the browser and if i refresh this and now if i click on this add to cart button now we are able to access the image name and the price in an object so if i click on this button we are getting an object with the image name and the price now as you can see we have access to the whole element we don't want the whole element from the dom we only want to get the name text the price text and the image url so how to do that for the name and the price we can use inner text so here sorry not in the image but for the name i will write inner text okay and even for the price i will write inner text 
let's save this and for the image we don't have text okay so if i go to index.html for the image uh, for the name we have text for the product price we have text but for the image we don't have text so we have the source attribute so we we need to get this attribute so instead of inner text method we will use get attribute method okay so let's go to main.js and here we need to write get attribute okay so we need to use this get attribute method and here we need to specify what kind of attribute we are looking for in our case it will be src source okay source attribute now let's save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this page and once again we need to click on this button so now as you can see we got the image url we got the name as soft drink then we got the price text okay so let's go to visual studio code and instead of console log let's write console table and if i save this and if i go to the browser if i refresh this and if i click on this which will show value in much cleaner way so now when i click on any of add to cart button i will see the value for the product which i want to add to cart it is important to have an access to those values because now we are able to add this product to the cart we are able to create a new dom element with the same image same name and same price here in our dom and also we will create an array with the product list which will store all products in our cart but this is what we are going to do in the next lecture so this is it for this lecture and i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we will add product to the cart so if you want to add product to our cart in the dome we need to first access this element in our case it's an element with the cart as a class name so for that we need to declare a const so let's go to main.js and here we need to declare a const with the name cart dom which is equal to document dot and let's look for an element by query selector so here let's look for class name called cart let's save this file so now in cart dom constant we have access to cart element so now we can add new html code by using insert adjacent html method so this method take two argument the first one is where we want to place our new code in our case it will be before end because i want to place every single item next to each other so if we add a new item i want to appear this item on the bottom of the cart and not on the top of the cart so let's use before end so i'll write before end okay let's save this and the second argument is our html code so instead of using single quotes we will use es6 syntax called template string which is a backtick key because in single quote we cannot break line in html string but if we use the backtick key we can use break lines so what is break lines okay if i add div and if i close this div so we can add this break lines but if we use single quotes then we won't be able to add this break lines but if we use template string we can use this break lines okay so let me press enter and in our case it will be a new item in the cart so let's add the cart item with the class name which is equal to cart item then inside this div we will have an image tag with the class which is equal to cart item image and the source will be the product image which is here okay the source will be this product image so how do we access a variable on any other javascript code inside this template string simply we need to use a dollar sign and then we need to use curly braces and inside this curly braces we can call javascript code so we need to write product dot image and we need to add alt tag which is equal to dollar sign curly braces and inside we will write product dot name let's close this image tag and after this we will take h3 tag and inside this we need product name so dollar product 
dot name okay then again we need the price so i'll just copy this code and paste it here and here i'll write price okay it's product dot price product dot name product dot image okay so let's save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this file and if i click on add to cart here as you can see the product has been added to the cart okay if i click on this t it has been added to the cart if i click here it is added to the cart okay this size is different that is why it is showing a bigger box so let's ignore this for now so here as you can see we are able to add items to our cart but now what is happening is if i press on this item we are able to add multiple products at the same time so this is not correct so we need to somehow avoid this kind of behavior so how can we achieve this okay so let's go to visual studio code so we need to create some new variable so let's call it as cart and this variable will be an empty array so now in this array we will store all the product which means that i can access this cart variable array and i can push a new product and now we can console log this cart variable okay so let's console log this cart variable let's save this file and let's go to the browser and let me open the console right click inspect and let's click on console let me refresh this file now if i click on add to cart button so we not only see the product in the dom but also i will see those item in the console so now i have an easy access to all the items from the cart because this code only adds product to our dome as a cart item but we need to get access to those item more easily in our case it will be an array which will store our product okay so now when i have an access or maybe before we can do anything with this cart array i want to change the text on the add to cart button so we will write add to cart button dom dot inner text which is equal to and inside this code i will write in cart let's save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this file so once i click on add to cart you will see the text will change to in cart so let me click this so here as you can see this text has been changed to in cart if i click this you can see we have change the text to in cart so now we can see that it is in the cart okay so now let's go to visual studio code so now what can i do to prevent duplicates in the cart so before this code execute because this code is responsible for adding new item or new product to the cart and also adding product to an array so before we execute this code i can check whether the product is in the cart already or not so how can we do that okay First, let me remove this console log and before this code execute I will iterate the cart array okay so this is the cart array so we need to iterate it for that we need to use for each method and inside this for each method I will take an arrow function and here I will take an argument or you can say a variable so cart item you can name anything you want but I will keep it as cart item and here we will console log cart item okay so let me save this so we are console logging every single item from the cart okay so now let's go to the browser and let me refresh this page so if i click on this add to cart button first you won't see anything because this code is executed before we push a new product to the cart okay so first time it won't show anything but if i click on this button again you will see that we got this product okay in the console so if i click it again you will see the product so what can we do with such kind of information so let's check the name product name okay so cart item dot name let's save this and let's go to the browser and let's refresh this let's click on this add to cart button first time it won't show anything but if i click it again you will see soft drink if i click it again it will show soft drink three three times then if i click it click it again it will show six times okay 10 times so so we you can see that soft drink is first it was three then six and then 10 but it does not mean that we have added 
tens of drinks okay it means that this for each loop has been iterated 10 times now we want to compare this cart item value with the product name okay so let's write triple equal to and here we need to write product dot name so now we are comparing this cart item name value with product dot name because the product name value is the value which we are trying to add to the cart and the cart item name is the value which is already exist in the cart so if we compare those value we can get true or false so we get true value when the product exists in the cart already okay so let me save this and let's refresh this code and let's inspect and go to console so first time when we run the code nothing appears in the console because there is no item in the cart but let's check the second item if i click on this t here you can see false because this product wasn't in the cart okay and when i click add to cart button again you will see true and now if i click on cola it will uh, you can see false but if i click it again you will see true the first time it shows false because the item is not in the cart the same goes for milk if i click on milk it will show me false because this item was not in the cart now if i click it again it will show me through because now it is in the cart so when the item is not in the cart it will say false and when it is in the cart it will say true same goes for soft drink if i click now it says through okay see through okay so this might be confusing but uh, you need to understand this code okay if you don't then once again just go through the lecture okay so in this way we can compare those value from the cart with the values from the product which we are trying to add to the cart and now we can use instead of for each method we can use a filter method and the difference between the for each method and the filter method is that this method will create a new array so let's remove this console log and let's console this filter method so let me close this let me save this file so now we need to go to the browser and let me refresh this file and if i click this button we have an empty array okay now if i click this button again now we have a soft drink in this array so again if i click this button for t it will be an empty array for cola will be an empty array for milk will be an empty array but when i click it again you can see we have the item okay if i click it again you can see we have an item we have cola so the first time you will see an empty array so the first time you will get an empty array but once you click it again you will get the item in it so this was for cola now if i click again now i will get two items okay if i click t again i will get two items so what can i do with this kind of information i can get the length value okay so here i'll write dot length and if i save this and if i go to the browser and if i refresh so if i click this will be zero and if i click it again i will get one okay if i click i'll get two if i click i get three we get the length value because this is an array and the length value will return how many soft drinks we have so the first time it will be zero then we have one two three so now if we have the length of this new array created by this filter method we can compare this we can check this value if this value is greater than zero or not this means that this product wasn't in the cart if it is zero that means it wasn't in the cart and if it is greater than zero then it is in the cart so let me save this and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this so the first time when i click it will give me false but when i click on the second time it will give me true it means that this product is in the cart same goes for t if i click first time it will give me false but if i click it again it will give me true first time it will give me false then again it will give me true and so on so now we can assign this statement so let's remove this console log and let's keep the parentheses as it is let me save this file okay if i keep these parentheses what happens okay so we don't need this parentheses okay now we need to create a new constant 
so const and we can name it as is in card which is equal to this statement and now if i console this console log this is in card and if i save this and if i go to the browser and if i refresh this the first time i will see false if i click it again you can see true false and then true okay so now if we want to compare these values we need to write an if condition so here i will write if is card is equal to false it means it wasn't in the card and here in this curly braces i will move this code so let's cut this code okay let me cut the whole code and let's paste it here so if this is equal to false only then execute this code okay so let me save this now let's go to the browser and check let me refresh so if i click this this card this product has been added to the card and if i click again so you won't see the item again so this in this way we have prevented the code from duplicating in the card so if i go to visual studio code so here if you don't want to write in this way you can write it in this way also not equal to is in card so if it is not equal to is in card then execute this code otherwise don't execute this code so let me save this and if i go to the browser refresh add to card so it has been added now next time if i add it won't be added to the card so in this way we can prevent duplicating of the product being added to the card so i hope you like this video so this is it for this video and i will see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we will see how we can increase the quantity of product so as we are going to change the quantity we need to add some initial quantity value so every time we are adding new product to the card we are going to define the quantity value so here we are going to define quantity value which is going to be one because for the first time we are adding product to the card its initial quantity or its default quantity is one okay let me save this file so what's next so if i add this product to the card i need some additional buttons here in this card for every single item to manipulate the quantity to increase or decrease or even to remove the whole item from the card so let's go to visual studio code and we need to come at this code where we are creating a new HTML code and let's add new buttons. So here I will add button and I will add a class which I have already created in my main.css. Okay. So this is the CSS which I have already created. So here we need to add class which is going to be button btn btn hyphen hyphen primary and btn hyphen hyphen small and here we need to create data action so data action so this is the data action attribute and let's name it as decrease item and here we need to close the button tag and inside this tag we will write minus but this is not a minus so this is a hyphen so for a minus i will use html entity which is end minus okay and a semicolon so now let's copy this code and let's paste it here and here we will change the data action to increase increase item and here instead of minus i will write plus let's copy this button again and let's paste it here and to remove i will write remove and here i will write times which will look like a cross icon okay and here we need to change the color of this button so we need a red color so i created a class with the name danger okay button btn hyphen hyphen danger let's save this and now let's go to the browser and let me refresh this file and if i add this product so as you can see we have minus plus and a cross button but it does not look good because in between we need a quantity 
we need to display the quantity. For that, we need to go to uh, Visual Studio Code, and here in between this two button plus and minus, we need to add H3 tag with a class which is going to be cart underscore underscore item underscore underscore quantity. And we need to close this H3 tag. And inside this H3 tag, I will write dollar and curly braces open close and we need a quantity. So product dot quantity. Okay, we are getting it from here. Product dot quantity. Let me save this and let's go to the browser. Let's refresh and now let's add this product. So as you can see, we got a quantity one because this is the default initial value. We got a quantity of one. So right now we can't increment or decrement this item or not even delete this item because as we need to work on this functionality. So let's work on this functionality. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. So we have created these buttons in HTML code. Now it's time to get those elements from the DOM in JavaScript and create some action for click events. So let's get those items from card DOM. So here I will write card DOM because we have card DOM const, which is the cart itself. Okay, which is the cart itself from the DOM from the HTML code and now we can use query selector all so here I will write query selector all and we can find all the cart items so we need to find this class cart item so let's look for the class cart underscore underscore item okay we need to search for this and now let's save this in a const so const and we can name this const as cart items dom equal to this statement okay so now we have assigned this node list to this constant so now we can use the for each method so let's use this cart item dom and now we can use the for each method and inside this i will take an arrow function and here we need to give the name of the argument or the variable as cart item dom so now we need to have a single iteration from this for each loop because here we have multiple items but in for each loop every single iteration will be only a single item in the cart from the dom now let's console this cart item dom so console log cart item dom let's save this and now let's check in the browser if I refresh this and if I open the console now if I click on soft drink here you can see we are able to access to the cart item from the cart now if I click on T it will add this product to the cart and and here we can see the first one okay which is cold drink and we can see the second one which is T because inside this for each loop the console will log each single item from the card DOM so now we have access to every single item from the card item from the DOM so now we can look for this buttons okay we can look for this buttons so let's go to visual studio code so now from every single card item DOM we can use query selector so let's remove this console log and here we can use query selector and inside this we can look for our increase item button okay but before we do that we need to be sure that we are looking for the item which is recently added to the card because here we are adding a new product to the card so we cannot just simply look for increase item maybe let's do that so let's do that and then we can then I'll show you why we can't do that so let's copy this code and here we need to paste it okay and then we need to add event listener so and inside this we will take click method and the second argument will be a callback function which in our case will be an arrow function and here we will console log cart item dom okay let me save this 
now let's check this in the browser so if i refresh this and if i inspect and go to console first let's add some products so i'll add soft drink query selector on element okay uh, i'm getting some issue so let's fix it okay so here we need to add square bracket which i forgot so i'm sorry for that let me save this and let's refresh it again so now let's add some products so let's add soft drink then i'll add cola then i'll add tea so now uh, let's click on cola uh, this plus icon oh i'm getting some issue okay here the spelling is mistake so let me save this and let's refresh it again i'm sorry uh, let's add few products so add soft drink and then i'll add cola then tea okay now let's uh, click on this plus icon for cola so here you can see two items have been added and now if i click on tea one item has been added and then if i click on soft drink three items have been added so we can't allow this kind of action because it's not good so if you look from performance of the user browser these are unnecessary iteration of loop which will slow down the execution of the code which will cause worse performance so we need to avoid this kind of action so for that we need to go to visual studio code so before we create a new add event listener we need to check if cart item dom dot query selector and here we need to check the class cart item name okay so here is the class okay so we need to add the class name here so let's add class equals to cart item name okay and here also we need to add a class which is cart item price okay but we need this so let's copy this and let's paste it here so we need to check if cart underscore item underscore name dot inner text is equal to product dot name okay so if this is equal to this product name if this statement is true okay if this is true then we can add event listener okay so we need to cut this and here we need to paste it we need to paste it here let's save this and now let's check in the browser so if i refresh and let's add some products and now if i click on plus icon you can see only one item has been added same goes with tea and same goes with cola okay so now we are able to add only one item at once because because now we are comparing those values the product name and the name in the cart so this code will run only once because only once the cart item name can be the same as the product name okay so we have fixed the issue which we were getting so now we only have access to items so we can create new actions for increasing quantity so we have to create another loop another for each loop so here we need to remove this console and we need to create another loop on cart array so cart dot for each and inside this we will take an arrow function and here we need to write the variable name or the argument which will be cart item and here we need to check the condition the same way which we did it here so here we need to write if cart item dot name is equal to product dot name if this statement is true then we can get cart item tom dot query selector and then we can use query selector and we need to get the class which is cart item quantity okay we need to get this class because here we need to check the quantity dot inner text now here we can increase the quantity 
so before this code here we can increase the quantity okay so here we need to write card item dot quantity equals to card item dot quantity plus one okay and here we need to copy and here we need to paste it let's save this and now let's go to the browser and check so let me refresh this and let's add some product so if i click on this plus icon it gets incremented okay so this is working so we have successfully done the functionality of incrementing the count so we can write something like this also if we if i remove this and if i write plus plus here and if i save this and if i go to the browser refresh it and if i add product to the card and if i add this plus sign this will work fine and we can do it in one more way so if i remove this and here if i write plus plus and if i save this and if i refresh it and if i add this product and if i do plus the first time it won't do anything but for the second time it will work because this means if you are writing plus plus after this card item dot quantity it means that it will display the item first and then it will increment so to avoid this first we need to increment and then we need to display the item so here we need to add plus plus and if i save this and if i go to the browser and refresh it and if i add this product and if i do plus so it is working fine let's add few more products and now it is working fine so in this way we have successfully uh, done the increment of the products okay so this functionality is done but this is not working so we need to fix this in the next lecture so this is it for this video i hope you like it so i'll see you in the next video till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we will work on decreasing quantity and removing items so decreasing action is very similar so we just need to copy this code so from here we need to copy and then we'll paste it here so now we need to change the name of this action so here okay the spelling is wrong decrease r e a s e decrease item okay so let's copy this action name and we need to paste it here and then instead of plus plus i will write minus minus okay so now if i save this and if i go to the browser and let me refresh this and if i add a product to the cart and if i increment it will increment and if i decrement it will get decrement so uh, but here there is one problem we are getting the value in minus which should not be the case okay we should not get the values in minus so we need to uh, check one more condition so for that we need to go to visual studio code and inside this if condition i will write one more if condition here i'll write cart item dot quantity if it is greater than one then we need to run this code okay so let me copy this or let me cut this and i'll paste it here let me save this if it is greater than one only then this code will execute okay so let me save this and let's go to the browser and check so let me refresh let's add this product and now if i decrement it won't go below one okay so there is one more check if uh, the uh, quantity is zero then it should automatically uh, get removed from here okay from the card so this product should get removed from the card if the quantity is below one so here we need to write one more condition after this so we need to write else and in else condition we need to write cart item dom dot remove okay we need to write this method let's save this and let's check it in the browser if i refresh and now if i uh, if we uh, press the minus button and if the value is below zero below one then it will get then this product will get deleted okay so now as you can see this product is deleted but we need to delete uh, we need to 
uh, update the cart array also okay we need to update this cart we are removing it from dom but we are not updating the cart array so for that we need to write cart dot filter method okay we need to use filter method and here inside this we will take an arrow function and here we need to give our argument which is cart item and here we need to write cart item dot name which should not be equal to product dot name okay and this we need to save it in cart okay so this will give a new array where the cart item is cart item dot name is not equal to product name okay so this will filter and give us a new array without this product name so let me save this and let's check it in the browser so if i press this this will be removed okay so now uh, there is one more thing we need to do is like uh, here if you can see we have removed the item from the cart but here still it is in cart so for that we need to go to visual studio code and after this code we need to write add to cart dom button uh, add to cart button dom dot inner text which should be equal to add to cart okay let me save this and let's go to the browser and let's check it and if i remove this now this button is again add to cart so if i remove this this is again add to cart this is again add to cart okay now i also want to animate this action okay if i go to the browser and if i add a product so it is animating and adding the product okay so i want to animate this action when we remove the item right now you see there is no animation so when we add the product okay to this cart this product slides from left because of the css styles for animating cart item so if i go to uh, main.css so this style is coming from here this animation is coming from here okay and uh, it is sliding from left to right and the opacity is also zero so the same way we have a class to remove the item so this is the class to remove the item uh, here is the animation okay and the keyframe is like uh, opposite of this to add we have uh, margin left minus 200 pixels and here uh, to remove the item we have margin left 200 pixels and from margin right it is 200 here it is opposite margin right minus 200 pixels so let's add this class okay in uh, our code so let's go to main.js let's copy this class name let's go to main.js and here we need to add okay the class name so cart item dom dot class list dot add and here we need to add the class name so here i'll paste it okay we don't want this dot let's see okay and uh, so let's check it in the browser if i refresh and if i add this product and if i remove it won't animate because the code is executed immediately which means we are removing the item from the dom and then we are adding this class okay so let cut this and let's paste it here okay let's save this but still it won't work because these two lines of code are executing instantly one after each other we are adding a new class name but after that we are removing the whole item from the dome the whole element so we don't see this animation because this animation lasts for some time it is 300 milliseconds okay so it lasts for some time so we need to wait for some time to uh, for this animation to happen so for that we need to add some delay so to add some delay we need to write set timeout function so here i will write set timeout and inside we need an arrow function and it takes two arguments so the first one is this action and the second argument is the time of delay so we need to add 300 milliseconds okay if i go to main.css here it is 0.3 seconds means 300 milliseconds means three seconds so here also we need to wait for three seconds to uh, run this line of code after three seconds this will uh, execute okay this code will execute 
So let's save this and let's check it in the browser if it is working or not. So if I add the product and now if I remove, you can see uh, the animation is happening. If I add three, four products and now if I remove this, so now it is animating. Okay, friends, now it is animating. So we have successfully uh, done the animation of removing the product. Now what's next? Now I also want to add new HTML attribute to in card button, which is disable attribute. So here we need to write add to cart button DOM dot disable, which is equal to and let's set it to true. Let's save this and now if I go to the browser and if I refresh and I click on add to cart, here you can see we are getting a disable button style which is coming from main.css. So let me search. Okay, here I've wrote a CSS where the opacity is 0 0.5 and cursor is not allowed. So here you can see the cursor is not allowed. The user is not able to click on this. Same goes with all the products. Okay, so now if I remove this uh, product, now again it should be opposite of what we have done. So for that we need to go to Visual Studio Code and we need to come to main.js and here after removing the item, we need to write add to cart button DOM dot disable which is equal to and now we need to set it to false. Let's save this and now if I check in the browser, if I add here it is disable but when I remove this item again it is unable okay so that is the reason uh, we need to write the opposite code of that so let's go to visual studio code so we have successfully uh, done the disable action for this uh, for button now I also want this button uh, this decrement button should be red in color once you add the product and if the quantity is one then this button should be red in color and if we increment it this color should change to blue color okay but before that we will work on this functionality this remove functionality so let's go to visual studio code and it is same as decrement okay so let's copy this code so let me see uh, from where it is starting and where it is ending So from here we need to copy and here I'll paste it okay so now we need to change the name of this action so what is the name of the action remove item so let's copy this and let me paste it here and uh, we don't require this if condition okay so I'll remove this and I'll remove this we only need this part of code which is responsible to remove the product okay if I save this and if I go to the browser and if I refresh and let's add some product and if I click on this you will see uh, now we are able to remove this product okay so let me add few more and let's try this so now we are able to remove this product it was quite simple right <laughs> so now uh, we need to add button danger for this decrement button okay so let me show you this so where is the button danger uh, button danger so here is the btn hyphen hyphen danger class we need to add here okay so if i save this and if i go to the browser and if i add this product you can see we have a red color button okay so now if i increment it should be blue in color which i already have button primary but now it should be dynamically a change okay so for that what we need to do is we need to come so we need to come to this increment item button and here in the if condition after this line we need to write cart item dom dot query selector and inside this we will add the data action which is this one okay so let's copy this and here we need to 
pasted in square brackets. So here we need to write class list because we need to add the class. Sorry, we need to remove the uh, button danger class. So remove btn danger. Okay. So let's save this and now let's go to the browser and check. If I add this product and if I click on this plus, it should become blue. Okay. So as you can see, but now when the quantity is one, it should come back to red. Okay. So, okay. Let's do that. Okay. So for that, we need to add a condition here. After this, if condition, we need to write if the cart item dot quantity, if it is equal to one, then we need the cart item tom dot query selector and here we need to uh, add this query selector this action we need increment so need we need to copy this and here we need to paste it and then we need to remove Sorry, we need to write class list dot remove and the class is btn primary. Let's save this and let's check it in the browser. If I add this and if I click on plus, this is blue. Now, if I okay, this is not working. What I'm doing wrong is this should not be primary. This should be danger. Okay, let's save this and let's check it once again. It is not working. If it is one, it should be red, but this is not happening. So I'm doing something wrong. So here we need to write add and uh, here it should be decrease item okay and not increase item so let's copy this paste it here let's save this and let's go back refresh and if i add this to cart now it is blue now if i change now it is one okay so now it is working fine we have successfully changed the color for this button to red and now if i if i am Okay, now this is something. If I make plus, it is working fine. Okay, this condition should be inside this. Okay, now it will work fine. Now let's save this and let's go to the browser. And if I refresh, now let's add two products and Let's check it. Now it is red. Now it is working fine. Okay, so this was it. So it is working absolutely fine. Okay, if I click on this, it will be removed and here also it will be removed. So this is it for this video and uh, I hope you like it. And in the next lecture, we will store the data in local storage so that once you refresh, it won't go from here, okay? So this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to save our data in local storage. To save our data in local storage, we need to store the items in the array to local storage, but we cannot save it directly because local storage can only store simple string. So we need to convert our array to a string. But before that, we will see where and how we will store our products to local storage. So when we push the product to the cart, that means we also need to save our cart array to local storage. So how to use local storage? So first we need to use local storage object. And then we need to access some method to save the state of the cart. So we need to use the method called set items, set item. And set item takes two arguments. The first one is how we want to call the key in local storage. So this key will be the key by which we will access the data. So in our case, let's name it as cart. 
and next we need to pass the value which we want to save so in our case it will be the cart so as i said before it cannot be saved directly because this set item method for local storage takes value only as a string so we need to convert our array to a string and we can do that by using a json object and the method stringify and here we need to pass cart okay the name of the array so this will convert javascript array to a simple string let's save this so we can copy this line of code and paste it everywhere we change our cart array so we are changing the cart array when we are changing the quantity because you are changing the quantity inside the cart array so we have to save the state of the cart here okay so let's paste the line of code here and let's save it so the same will happen here if we change the quantity we save the cart state okay so here we are changing the quantity okay minus minus cart item that quantity so here we need to paste the line of code and here we are changing the whole cart by removing the item okay so here we are removing the item so here we need to paste the line of code and then again same goes for here we are removing the item this is the same piece of code which is here so here also we need to paste the line of code okay let's save this and in the coming up lectures we will refactor this code because this code is same as this code so we will do some uh, refactor okay of this code so now let's save this code and let's go to the browser and let me refresh this file and we need to open the console uh, we need to go to application and here we need to uh, go on local storage and here is the path okay and now let's add some product so let me add some products so as you can see we have access to local storage so in local storage we has we have an object it's here the value of our cart in local storage so it is just a string in json format but in the browser if i click here you can see in the browser converts the string to json object and we can see a nice way whatever we have in the cart so if i change the quantity let's say if i change the quantity you can see this quantity is also been updated here okay and if i change the quantity here so it has been updated here okay so now if i refresh the page so as you can see we don't have any item in the cart but but the value still exist in the browser okay here as you can see the value still exist but we can't see the item in the cart in our document because we don't have any code responsible for adding those items from local storage to the cart because every time we refresh the page we need to create the code to do the same thing which we does manually like this okay this is the thing we are doing manually but there is no code responsible for adding the product from the local storage to the cart so we have to do that so we need to do the same action in our code and to add items to the cart automatically from local storage so we will transform this object this json object to our array and then we will loop through our array with uh, we will use for each method and for every existing item in the cart we need to call the same code as we call for adding product to the cart so for that we need to go to visual studio code let's go on top and here here let's console log cart and let's save this and let's go to the browser and let's go to the console and let me refresh the page so as you can see here uh, it is an empty array because this is the initial value initial default value so we need to change the value we need to get the value from the local storage so here we need to use local storage object and we need to use get item method and our item has a key called cart okay so this is the name of the key which we have given so if i go down here so this is the name of the key which we have given so we can console log this key name 
So if I save this and if I go to the browser and if I refresh the page and if I add some products, let me refresh it again. Let me save this and let's refresh. So as you can see, uh, so here uh, we need to give double quotes and we need to save the file. And here, if I refresh the page, you can see in console, this is the JSON format of the cart. So if I add few products, and if I refresh the page, you can see those product in the console. But as I said, it is in JSON format. So let me add few more products like cola and milk. Let me refresh it. So as you can see, we have uh, cola, we have milk. Okay. So as I said, uh, it is in JSON format. So we need to convert this into array. Okay. For that, we need to go to Visual Studio Code. So we have to parse our code. So we need to use parse method from JSON object. So here we need to write JSON dot parse and we need to wrap this in a round bracket. And now if I save this and now if I go to the browser and if I refresh, so this is what we get. Uh, this is the array which we required. Okay. So this is what we wanted. But what if uh if i clear this local storage so let me clear this and if i go to the console and if i refresh this page we get a null value because uh there is no item in local storage so that's why we are getting null so therefore we cannot assign this method okay so we cannot assign this method instead of this array and if i console this cart and if i save this what happens if i save this and if i refresh and if I add the product to the cart, we are getting an error. Cannot read property filter of null. This code is broken because, because we cannot use filter method on null value. Okay. So we need to fix this, right? So for that, we need to go to Visual Studio Code. So we need to write a condition. So let me just cut this code. Okay. And here the initial value will be an empty array. And here I will check if the local storage okay if it is not equal to null if it is not equal to null then we will take a variable cart which will be equal to this value okay so if there will be a cart inside the local storage so this statement will be true and if this value is different from null then we will reassign to our cart variable a new value from the local storage which will be our cart okay now if i save this i hope you got it we are controlling this cart okay first the initial value of the cart will be an empty array then we are checking the condition if this value it is if this value is not equal to null then we will assign this cart variable the new value which will be the cart okay so when we add the product there will be some value in that so we will assign that to the cart and we can see that value so first so we save this and now we can check this in the browser if i refresh so first the initial value will be an empty array okay then we are checking the condition that is there anything in the cart or is it null if it is null then it will show this right now it is null so it is showing this if i add some product to the cart okay let me add two products and if i refresh the page now you will get the new value which will be the array which will be this one okay so i hope you understood uh, the logic behind this okay so now let's move ahead so we can write this if condition in much better way we can write this statement inside this cart variable so let's copy this line of code and we can check here so we can check this value and use our operator and let's delete this if condition let me save this file so this condition work like this if there is an item in the local storage card then its value will be assigned to this cart variable and if it's not then we will assign an empty array okay so let me wrap this with a round bracket and let's see uh, there is no need of this round brackets okay so let's save this and it will work uh, as it was working earlier so let me refresh this file 
and now let's uh, go to application and let's clear this out and let's go to console and if i refresh you can see an empty array and if i add product to the card and if i refresh and if i go to the application you can see we have that uh, arrays okay of the product so now let's go to visual studio code so now we can use the forish method but before i use it uh, i have done a mistake here we don't require this okay and if i save this everything will work as it is it will work fine okay so as you can see we have two arrays okay so that was a mistake so please remove that and then uh, before i use the for each method i will use a if condition to check the length of the card so here i'll write if the card dot length if it is greater than zero which means if there are any items in the card so we will execute this code inside the for each loop okay inside the for each method so here i'll write the for each method so card for each and inside this i will take an arrow function and here the single iteration will be cart item and let's console log cart item okay let me save this and let's go to the browser and if i refresh you can see that we have every single item from the cart so for every single item from the cart we have to create the same code which is here so i already copied the code so let's remove this console and let's paste it and let's save this file and here as you can see we have product.image product.name so here we need to take a const which will be equal to product uh, which will be equal to cart item okay or else you can write uh, instead of product you can write cart item everywhere but i think this is much better okay or you can take a product here and then without this line of code you can just move ahead but uh, let's keep as it is and let's save this file and now let's go to the browser let me remove this and let's go to the browser and if i refresh okay i'm getting some error so let me copy this code again and let me paste it maybe i have done some mistake while doing a copy paste so if i save this file now it is working fine i'm not getting any errors so now let's go to the browser and if i refresh so now uh, we see uh, we can see that uh, our product are been shown in the dom in our document okay so first we used to do it manually now it is showing in the dom let's add uh, a new product so now we are able to add cola and if i add t so it won't be able to add so we have to work on that but if i add any new product so we are able to add it okay now if i click on any button it won't work because if i go to visual studio code so we ha have only done the functionality of adding the product to the dom but we have not uh, we have not done any functionality for adding the action okay uh, we have not done any actions like increase item decrease item we have not done uh, action for to the, those buttons okay so we have uh, not run any code for adding action to those buttons uh, so we need to do that we have only done run the code for creating a new cart item in the dom okay so we need to work on that but before we do that we also need to access for add to cart buttons dom because here in our code we also access add to cart button dom to change add to cart to in cart because we have items in the cart but we don't know in the product list which product already exists in the cart so to do that we need to create a new for each loop inside here okay so here in this if condition we need to take one more for each loop and in this for each loop we have to get our add to cart buttons dom and create a for each loop so it will be same like this so let's copy this and here i'll paste it and now we can access the product dom so let's access it so let's copy this code 
and here we need to paste it oh sorry here we need to paste it and now we uh, we don't need to add new event listeners here inside this code because we are doing this here so what we want to do here is to create actions buttons for items button from the dome we don't need to create same action we create here okay so as we have an access of product dom and now we can check every single button or every single product from the dome if it exists or not so let's save this code so we need to check if every single product if it exists in the card so here we need we need to write if condition and here we need to write product dom dot query selector and inside this we will take the class product name and here we need to write inner text and we need to compare with product dot name okay so we need to compare with product dot name this is the product dot name okay so if this statement is true then we can change the add to cart text to inner cart okay so let's copy this code and we need to paste it here let's save this and now we can check it in the browser so if i refresh so as you can see the product which are added to the cart the button has changed to in cart okay so this is working fine now let's go to visual studio code so now what's next so we can copy the code after this two lines because we already added this two lines here okay so we can copy the entire code from here okay so let's copy the code from here till here okay let's copy this and let's and let's paste it here okay and now if i save this file and if i go to the browser and if i refresh so now this buttons will work okay so if i add uh, increase the quantity so it is working fine let me refresh now as you can see this button is red uh, because we don't know uh, the items which are coming from local storage so that is why it is giving a red button so we need to fix this so to fix this we need to go to visual studio code and here we need to add a condition so let's remove this button danger and here we need to add a condition and the condition will be product dot quantity which is equal to one if the quantity is equal to one then if this statement is true this is a ternary operator if this statement is true then we need to use the class button danger and if this is false then we don't need any class okay and here i'll give a space and here i'll remove this so now we need to copy the same statement and then we need to paste it here as well so let's remove this okay let's save this and now let's go to the browser and let's refresh the file and now we can see we are getting a proper red button after refreshing so let's add to cart few more items and now if i add the quantity if i increase the quantity and if i refresh the file and now as you can see we are getting a blue button and when the quantity is one only then we can get a red button and if i click on that it will get removed Okay, this will get removed so it is a blue button now if it is now the quantity is one then it will be red and will be removed from the card and if i increase it it works fine if i refresh the quantity is still five so now everything is working fine uh 
so once your customer comes to the cart page so he or she will see that uh, this products are already been added by her or him so in this way uh, this lecture is finished and we have successfully added our product to local storage we have successfully saved our product to local storage okay so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we will clean up our code so let's look for same piece of code for example here as you can see this code is repetitive okay if i come down a little bit so here you can see this is the same code which is on the top so what we can do is we will create a function and we will paste this code and then we will execute this code whenever we call the function okay that particular function so let's cut this code from year to year okay and just remember the line number 122 and here we will create a function with the name insert item to dom and let's paste it okay then we need to pass this product object as an argument so here we need to pass it as an argument now let's copy this function and sorry let's copy this function and let's go to line number what was the line number 122 right so this was the line number we need to paste it here and then we need to cut the code on the from the top so here also we are using the same code so let's remove this and paste it here let's save this and let's go to the browser and check if everything is working fine or not so let's add few products let's increment the count so now it is working fine so everything is working fine so we have successfully refactored some part of code now again there is one more uh, code which has been duplicated so let's check okay here is the code where we are changing the text of add to cart to in cart this code is also repetitive so if you can see this entire code has been repeating here okay so here as you can see this is the same code which is at the top so what we'll do is we will cut the entire code from line number 109 let me see where this function is getting end till 180 okay from 109 till 180 we will cut so 109 till 180 we will cut this piece of code and here we will create one more function with the name handle action buttons buttons okay and here we will paste the entire code and now we need to pass two argument we need to pass add to cart button dome as an argument because we are handling add to cart buttons and all the all this action buttons okay so let's copy this and let's paste it here the second one is the product object so this is the product object so we need to paste it here and then we can use this function in line number 109 so let's go to line number 109 where okay here so let's paste it here and then okay this is done then the second one is here so here we need to remove till here okay let's delete it and let's paste the function let's save this and let's go to the browser and check everything is working fine or not so let me add few products and now we will increment okay it is working fine So everything is working fine so we have refactored few code uh, okay now let's move ahead so now we are not repeating the code but we can make this code more readable by moving some part of this code to new function for example this for each uh, method we can create a new function and we can paste this code this part of code and we can call that function here for increase item okay 
same goes with decrease item this is a for each loop so we can cut this piece of code and we can create a new function for this decrease item and same goes with removing item okay so first we will do for uh, increase item so let's create a new function first let me copy cut this code okay so here we will cut this code and then here i will create a function new function with the name increase item and inside this function i will paste the code which i have copied and here i will pass the argument as product okay because we need to get the access of this product object now let's copy this function and now let's paste it here but we don't require this curly braces okay so let's remove this and now everything is now everything is fine we will check it in the browser later but first we will refactor the entire thing for now we'll do for decrease item okay so let me cut this code from here so where is this starting from okay here it is starting and here it is ending so let me cut this code we'll create a new function with the name decrease item let me paste the code and here we need to pass uh, first we need to pass the product object and then we will pass the add to cart button dom okay so add to cart button dom and one more thing we required is the this cart item okay so this cart item we also require this cart item object okay so here i'll pass cart item same goes for your okay. okay cart item dom okay so we require this and here also we required cart item dom so cart item we need we need the access of this okay let me save this and now let's copy this function and let's go here and we don't require this curly braces let me paste okay so this is done now we will do it for remove item so let me cut this code from here till here okay we we'll create a function remove item let me paste this and again we required product then we required cart item dom then we required add to cart button dom okay let me copy this function and let me pass this here without this curly braces let me save this file and okay and here one more thing which we don't require is this for each loop okay because we are using a filter method so we don't require this for each method here we require for each method because we are comparing this cart item name with the product name but here we are using the filter method to uh, check the cart item name is not equal to product name or not so here i'll remove this we don't require and even this function okay if statement let me save this and now uh, to copy this function and here where is the remove item here instead of this i'll remove this and i'll paste it this function okay because this was the same as you can see i'll undo this so this is the same code which we are using here okay so let me remove this and let me paste this code okay this function so now we are done with this but uh, is there anything which is required no let me check in the browser let me refresh let me add some product to the card let's check the functionality we are not able to increment okay let's check what is wrong with this adding adding 
increase item product card item dom okay here we required card item dom okay so this i forgot to pass let me save this now let's go and check refresh let me increment okay now it is working remove let's add some more products so we are able to increment and decrement okay so if i refresh everything is working fine so this is it uh, we have successfully refactored the code and we have even uh, make our code more readable so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next video okay till then take care and bye bye hello friends welcome back in this video we are going to create clear card button so every time we add new item to the dom we are inserting new code to the dom we also want to create a new footer for example if we add a new item to the dom so we also want to create a footer with one button called clear card so let's work on this let's go to visual studio code and when we are inserting this html code after this we are going to create one more uh, insert adjacent html so card dom dot insert adjacent html method and here we will take after end okay here we took before end but here we need to take after end and here we need to add the html so again the same thing we need to uh, add the backtick key okay which is about the tab key so this is also called template string so here we can use multiple html code so div and let me close this div and inside this div we will add a class which is going to be cart footer okay and inside this div we will add button with the class which is going to be button button danger okay and here i'll write clear card let me close this button now let's save this and let's go to the browser and check either we are able to add the button or not so as you can see we have two buttons okay so let me remove this let me refresh okay if i add this card if i add this product you can see there is a button if i add one more then there will be two buttons three buttons four buttons but we don't want this multiple buttons we only want one button at one time okay at one time means if there are four products then also there should be only one button and when we click on this this card should be clear out okay so let's fix this issue uh, of having only one button so let's go to visual studio code and we need to check uh, write a condition okay here that if and we need to take document dot query selector query selector okay and we need to add a class which is card footer okay so if there is a class footer okay if there is a class called card dash footer then this code should get executed so let let me cut this code and we need to paste it here okay let me save this and now if i go to the browser if i refresh now we don't see any cart let me remove all the items let me add it okay so we are not able to see the cart because we need to check one condition that if this is equal to null only then execute this line of code okay why null because if i console this statement okay let me copy and let's console log this statement and if i save this and if i go to the browser if i inspect okay sorry here we got the cart button but let me show you if we don't have any item in the cart okay we refresh so as you can see we have the value as null so this statement means there is uh, no value 
okay in the cart so we need to check the condition if there is a null value if this is equal to null okay this is equal to null then only execute this so this means that it will execute only once and if there is any item in the cart then this code will not execute okay so let me refresh again and let's add a product to the cart so now as you can see we only have one cart button okay so this is awesome let me remove everything so as you can see now uh, we have removed all the items but still there is a button inside uh, this cart so we need to fix this okay so for that we need to go to visual studio code so we need to check on the remove item function so here is a remove item function and here we need to check a condition that if cart dot length is less than one if this condition is true then we need to write document dot query selector and inside this we will find a class okay we will access this class cart footer dot and we will add a method called dot remove okay and now let's save this and now let's check it in the browser if i refresh and if i add some items and now if you remove all the items this clear button will also uh, disappear okay so if i remove every item let me remove okay so now uh, we are successfully we have successfully removed this cart a clear card button when all the items are removed from the card but still this clear card is not working so let's go to visual studio code and now uh, we can uh, copy this code okay this entire code from here this condition and we can create a new function so let me cut this and here we will create a new function called add card footer let's save this and here we will create a function with the name add card footer and inside this we will paste the code which we have copied and now uh, i will look for this button add to cart so we need to add this data action okay so data dash action equals to and the name of the action will be clear card so please add this action okay and now we uh, will look for this button add to uh, add we will uh, look for this button to add event listener okay to this button so uh, here we need to write document dot query selector and inside this we will look for this data action let me copy this and i'll paste it here and here we will add add event listener and the first one the first argument is click okay we will look for click event and the second will be a callback function that will be an arrow function and okay so we don't require this curly braces the function name would be clear card okay let me save this and now we will create this function clear card okay so function clear card okay and inside this we will write card dom dot query selector all and we will look for class card item and we will take for each loop and we will iterate card item dom and here we will take the uh, remove item we will remove the item so for that we require this two line of code okay set timeout so we will paste it here and then we will take card array so this will be the card array and then we are saving this array into a local storage so local storage dot remove item and the key is cart okay then we will write document dot query selector and we will look for the class 
cart footer and we will remove the item okay so let me save this and then we required add to cart buttons dom and we will add a for each loop add to cart button dom and here we will take an arrow function and we required add to cart button dom dot inner text which is equal to add to cart so let me copy this code we have this code actually so let me check okay here this is we need this two line of code so let me copy this and we will just paste it here let's save this and now uh, i think everything is fine only this line of code should be inside this okay inside this function so let me save this file and let's go to the browser and check whether we are able to clear the cart or not so we are able to clear the cart okay so if I click on this, the cart has been cleared. And if I remove, everything is working fine. If I remove this, okay, it's gone. So let me increment and let me refresh. So we are good to go. So we have successfully uh, uh, done the functionality for clearing the cart, okay? So this is it for this video and this is it for this video series. Uh, I hope you like uh, all the lectures and uh, this is it for the video and I'll see you in some other series or in some other video. So till then take care and bye bye. Hello friends welcome back. In this video we will add PayPal integration. So first we need to add a pay button. So we need to duplicate this button and here instead of button danger we will add button primary and the data action will be checkout. And here instead of clear card we will Need, we need to write pay let me save this and if i go to the browser and if i refresh and if i click on add to cart here you can see pay button okay and inside this pay button we need to add amount the total amount so if the user add the product and let's say uh, this is six dollar product so here the amount should be six dollar and if we increase the product to two quantities then the amount should be 12 okay so we need to show this amount because right now the user don't know how much he has to pay for the order so for that we need to go to visual studio code and we need to create a new function we need to create couple of functions so first the function will be checkout and then we need to create one more function and name it as count Cart total. And now we can use for each method on cart. So cart dot for each. And inside this, we will take an arrow function. And this will iterate each cart item. And then we can count the total amount. So, how to achieve that? First, we need to create a new variable. So here we need to create a new variable and name it as cart total and assign a value zero. Okay. And inside this arrow function, inside this for each loop, we will say cart total equals to cart total plus and here we need to write cart item dot quantity multiply by cart item dot price okay let me save this and here we can control log cart total 
Okay, let's save this. And we need to add this function when we are adding a new product to the DOM. So let's go at the top and So here we are adding a new product to the DOM. So let me paste the function here. And uh, then we need to add function. Here when we are increasing the item. So here we need to paste it. Then when we remove, decrease the item, here also we need to add the function and here and we remove the item okay let me save this and let's go to the browser and let me inspect let's console we have console uh one second let me check so we have console log card total so Let me refresh the page. Let me clear this. Add to cart. So here, as you can see, we have the amount six. And if I increment the product, so now it is twelve. Okay. And let me add this. So now it is seventeen. And if I increment this product, so it is twenty-two. Now twenty-seven. So this total amount is. Uh, we are able to achieve the total amount. So it is working fine. Let's go to Visual Studio Code, and here we need we can change this code. Uh, so we can remove this card total and plus, and instead of this, we can write plus equals to okay, and then uh, this card item dot quantity multiplied by card item dot price. This will work uh, the same as it was working. So let me save this and let's check it in the browser. If I refresh, let me remove this. So as you can see, we have a total amount of six. Then we have 11, 6 plus 5 is 11, okay? Now we want to show the amount here up in the pay button, okay? So how do we achieve it? So let's go to Visual Studio Code. And here we need to write document dot query selector. And then we can select the button, the data action, which is button uh, data action equals to checkout. Let me copy this. And inside the square bracket, we need to paste it. Okay. And here we need to write dot inner text, which is going to be now this will equal to a backtick key. And inside this backtick key, we will write pay dollar. And here we need to write dollar curly braces. And inside we will write card total. Okay. So let me save this and let's remove the console we don't require it now let me save and let's go to the browser and check if i refresh uh, let me clear this card if i click on add to cart so we are not able to cart total is not defined okay cart total okay let me save this let's clear it this out click on add to cart and here as you can see here the amount is pay six dollar i click Click this here it is pay eleven dollars okay let me increment and let me decrease the item so we are successfully able to uh, add the total amount here inside the pay button okay now let's go to visual studio code and we need to create a new function okay so let's create a new function and name it as save card okay and inside this function we will add the uh, once again let me go at the top and so we can add these two lines okay local storage set item and the function which we have created so here i will paste it and instead of these two lines we will write this function okay so this will make our code a little bit more lesser. Okay, so here I'll remove this and I'll paste it. Save card. And where is the local storage? Increment item. Okay, here we need to 
pasted. Then here in the decrease item also we have added. Let me paste it. In the remove item also we need to add this. And that's it. So let me save this and let's go to the browser. And if I refresh and if I remove this, so here as you can see, we are able to uh, add the total inside the pay button. Okay, and it is working fine. If I refresh, let me check. Okay, one second. So if I go to the browser and if I clear the card refresh the page and if i add to cart the product and here as you can see the total amount but when i refresh the page the total amount went away because i forgot to add the function here at the top when we are adding the product okay so the function is counter card total okay let me copy this and here when we are adding the product to the cart here we need to add the function so let me save this and let's go to the browser and if i refresh now the total amount doesn't go so if i clear the cart if i add to cart two products the total amount is 11 and if i refresh so here as you can see we can still see the total amount 11 okay so now we can uh, we can make the checkout action okay if i click on this pay button uh, it should redirect to the paypal okay paypal uh, payment gateway okay so we need to go to paypal website okay and so paypal.com and here we need to search okay let me go to paypal india and then we need to search one second uh, let me go to let's go to get in start we need paper documentation so one second let me click on developers okay at the bottom we need to click on developers so it will go to developers.paper.com and here we need to search for html reference Okay, let's click on this and here you need to come on this page okay uh, HTML reference and you we need to click on cart upload command so if I scroll down so this is the form which we required so HTML for passing individual item detail to paper so we need this uh, form so let's copy this form so anyone click on this pay button will redirect to the PayPal page and he will able to see the whole cart on the PayPal page. So, so I have copied the code and we'll create a form in JavaScript. Okay. So we'll create a form in JavaScript and then we can inject that form into HTML. Okay. So let's go to main.js and inside this function checkout. Okay. we need to create create a we need to create a variable and we'll name it as paypal form html which is going to be equal uh, which is equal to and then we will add a backtick key and then we can paste the code which we have copied okay And here we need to uh, write the email ID which we have on PayPal. So I will write my email ID. You can write your own email ID which we use, which you use for PayPal. Okay. And after this three inputs where we have card, okay, uh, this uh, upload and the business name, okay. I'll just comment out this code right now and then here I will add a template string we need to 
sorry uh, here so here we need to add a template string so this will end here and then here again we need the PayPal form HTML this is going to be equal to a template we need to open the template string and here it is closing okay and here before the equal to we need plus sign this means that we are joining this code with this code and we are not replacing it okay so this code this form code this input have been added with this okay these are these have been joining together okay why i'm doing this because here we need to add a for each loop so that's why i am uh, creating three different uh, not three different uh, variables but the same variable but joining each to each other okay so then here we need to again take the variable so paypal form html which is going to be sorry here we don't require it okay here we required a for each method so i will take a for each method on cart so for each and inside we will take a cart item so every single item we will it we are iterating every single cart item and here we need to take the variable so paypal form html plus equal to and then a backtick key and inside this okay sorry and inside this backtick key we will add this or we will add all this input so let me cut and paste it here and let's undo this comment okay let me save this and and we don't require this shopping so first we will remove this three items we don't require this and here we don't require shopping okay we require quantity so as i go to uh, the paypal website here as you can see we need a quantity we need item amount and quantity so let's copy this quantity and let's paste it here okay we don't require shipping we require quantity okay and this value should come dynamically so for that we need an index so here the second argument will be index and here we need to change the value dynamically so dollar and then curly braces index okay so that we can get a unique value let me copy this and paste it here and this value will be the cart item okay so dollar curly braces and here we have to pass the cart item dot name okay and then let me copy this paste it here cart item name price and quantity let me save this now we need to inject this code to document okay in the html so here we need to write document dot query selector and we are inserting this uh, code inside the body tag so here we need to write insert adjacent sorry insert adjacent html and we need to add this code before the body okay before the body ends so here we need to write before end okay and the second argument will be paypal form html okay <clears throat> so this is the code okay and we need an overlay so i have created an overlay in the css so overlay so this is the overlay for css once you click the button it will take time to redirect to the paypal website but before that we need to show something so that user cannot click on the form again okay for that i will add overlay in the form so i'll take a div with a class which is going to be overlay 
Okay, and let me close this div. Now we need to submit this form. For that, here we need to write document dot get element by ID. So we need to create this ID in the form. So first let's create the ID. We can do it by query selector also, but ID is better. So the ID, the name of the ID will be PayPal hyphen form. Okay, so let me copy this. And here we need to paste the ID, okay? And here we need to write dot and submit. Okay, let me save this. And I think we are good to go. Let me close this. And if I go to the browser and if I refresh the page, let's remove everything from the cart. Let me add these two items, okay? Increment it 16. And if I click on this PayPal pay button, so we forgot to add the event listener. So here we need to add the event listener. So let me copy this code, okay? We need to add event listener for checkout, okay? So here the data action will be checkout. So let me copy this and paste it here. And the function is checkout, okay? So let me copy this and paste it here. And let me save this and now let's go to the browser. Now everything will work fine. So let me refresh. Okay. Let me close this and if I click, so here is the overlay. And now it will redirect to the PayPal account. Okay. So let me save this and if I go to the browser, refresh. And if I click on pay, pay button, so this is the overlay. So we have added and now it is coming to the PayPal account. And as you can see, we have $10 to pay, okay? And even you can click on pay with credit card or debit card. So if I click here, you can see the item total is $10. And we can add the debit card and we can make the payment. So here you can see we have added the uh, product T and the quantity is 2, the total amount is 10. So if I go back, let's add a few more product. Let me clear this card, refresh it again. Let me add soft ring T. We can increment this T. Okay, so total are 6 product and with a total amount of 32. So let me click on this pay button. And if I click, so the total amount is showing 20. If I click here, we have four quantity. So the showing things doesn't appear to be working at this moment. There was some issue. Let me add T, Cola, okay. So the total items are two and the amount is nine. So let me click on this. Okay, so it is showing four. So there is some issue okay so we are not getting the first item because in the code here uh, we need to add the index we need to increment the index before this items have been added so here we need to write plus plus index let me save this and now if I go to the browser and if I refresh the page 
let me clear the card so this is the first item chopped in second item t so total is 11 if i click on pay button so now you can see the total item uh, total is 11 so it is now showing the correct amount and all the items will be or added to the cart okay so if i click here so soft drink and t so total is 11 okay so if i go back and if i add two items so the total is 17 and here also two items total is 22 27 let's click on pay button and now total is 27 click here pay with credit card So now the total is, you know, quantity is 2, so 12, and here the quantity is 3, so 15, total is 27. So in this way, you can uh, make your customers to pay for your products, okay? So I hope you learn uh, the PayPal integration with uh, the JavaScript, and uh, I hope you like this course. So this is it for this course, and I'll see you in some other course. So this is it. Take care and bye-bye.